Hello crafters and welcome to season three of Peter P Craft Presents brought to you by From Picture to Page and Beyond Paper Craft Shows. Now I'm your host Michelle Brown, Creative Director of From Picture to Page, which is our scrapbooking, mixed media art and paper crafts community. Now Peter P Craft presents a whole heap of interviews and demonstrations with our talented retailers along with some very special guest artists. So for all the details for season three, as well as catching up on season one and season two, head over to our website from picture to page and beyond.com.au because we are based here in Australia, where you can see all the sessions, catch up and of course connect with our guest artists and our local retailers and continue to support them. Now while you're over there, make sure you're on our email list because at the end of each week we'll give you a summary so you can see exactly who's been on as well as let you know who's coming up next week. Now whether you're watching here live on Facebook or a replay on Facebook or on YouTube, we'd love to know that you're there. So pop in the comments just like Wendy's done and Sandra and let us know that you're there. And if you've got any questions during today, make sure you pop them in and we will do our very best to answer them as well. So today, Peter P. Craft presents, and we are very excited to present, Gel Press with Cheryl. Hello, Cheryl. Hi, how are you guys doing? We are great. We are so excited to have you here today. I'm excited to be here. I wish that I was there in person, though. I know. I'm so and sad. We were talking about you coming back because, yeah, it was now two years since you were here last. I know. I know. I'm so sad, but we will. I will be back. Yep. Definitely. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, for those that haven't heard of Gel Press before, there may be some. Surprise, surprise. Tell us a little bit about Gel Press and your role as the creative team director. Ah, uh, Well, Gel Press is... A whole lot of fun to play with. Uh, we have a little saying that we every plate is infused with fun. So it is a reusable mono printing plate. Mm -hmm. And it is, they come in multiple different sizes. And you can just, you, you can do so many different mediums that are, that you can use on them. And it's reusable, it's clean, it, you can easily use different mediums on it, whether it be, acrylic paints you can use oil paints on them you can even use watercolor inks oh, distress okay. inks mm -hmm. oxide inks a variety of different inks on them as well um and you can use them for backgrounds mixed media card making scrapbooking so many different things that you can create with them and just to have fun that's the whole purpose mm -hmm. of playing with them yeah. and you don't have to worry about you know, is them going bad or having to store them or anything else like that. So, yeah, excellent. And it's interesting that you say using other mediums. I guess initially I always just think acrylic paint. I think that's a good place to start. But like you said, yes. that pretty much the sky's the limit. Anything that's that's wet and inky or painty, you can use. You can. We we tell everybody just you don't want to use anything that would be corrosive. So anything that would have a chemical reaction in it. So you don't want to use like a paint that would crackle on it. Uh, you don't want to use a blowtorch on it. They are flammable. So oh please don't goodness. use a blowtorch. <laughs> you don't want to use any uh, like an exacto knife or yeah. scissors or something like a glitter or okay. a pumice uh, medium or something that had a coarse texture to it, you wouldn't want to put that on something that would scratch it. Mm -hmm. But other than that, play with it. I mean, the thing does have two sides. So if you completely mess up one side, just flip it over and use the other side. Yeah, excellent. And so how did you get involved with the design team? I have been playing with a gelatin plate for many, many years since I started teaching and travel teaching. So probably about nine years ago. And when Gel Press first came to the trade show a few years back, I eagerly ran to their booth <laughs> and met them and told them a little bit about what I do and travel teaching and met the brand director at that time and introduced myself to Laurie Carrion mm -hmm. and started working with them and travel teaching at that point. So I was traveling around. And then just recently, I came on board working with directing their team. Mm -hmm. So just just in June 1st 
is when I stepped up and became the creative team director. So this is a new position for me, taking on a little bit more responsibility <laughs> And we're revamping the team and just re-expanding them, bringing some people back on board, bringing in some new players, and really getting out there again. So if there's anything that you want to learn about Gel Press, mm -hmm. see a little bit more inspiration, make sure that you go check out their YouTube channel mm -hmm. and, and see all that our creative team is doing because they're putting out videos every week. There are new videos on our, on our Gel Press YouTube channel, and they are doing a fabulous job. Mm -hmm job. So we have about 16 no different, yes, between our, we have yep. Joe Press educators and team members, creative team members mm -hmm. who are teaching online classes, creating YouTube content, and just are excited and staying busy. We just brought on two new people who are going to be part of the Faith Impressions team. Mm -hmm. So we have our Faith Impressions line with Carrie Salini, and that's a little bit of, you know, Bible journaling, faith journaling, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So she's expanding mm -hmm. that aspect of it. So we just brought on two new people there who will be, we actually just announced them, Marjolaine Walker, Marjolaine Walker and Renee Davis. Oh, so we just brought them on as well. Yes. And uh, they're... <laughs> It's just exciting to see the creativity that's there. And they run from, you know, one extreme to the <laughs> next. So to see all of the, the different things that they're doing, playing on fabric, playing on, you know, different mediums, working in fine art, working in collage, card makers, scrapbookers, you name it, somebody's doing something so you can't you can't get bored watching no. the gel press videos and at I all. I think that's amazing because I know when I first started playing with the gel plates, um, I mean probably eight or so years ago, and probably like five years since we met. And what I love about it, which what was frustrating at the start, but what I love about it now is that you just kind of never know what you're going to get. So at the start with my engineering <laughs> hat, I was very frustrated that it kind of wasn't a paint by numbers or a card kit. But when you embrace that, that's the exciting part of it. Yeah, there. I mean, it. it's definitely, I don't want to say there's a learning curve to it, mm. but it is in some ways, you know, you kind of have to work backwards and because you're pulling prints. So, and it is, it is mono printing, mm. which means it's one print. Mm. So you'll never get the same print twice. Mm. And that's the beauty and fun of creating mono prints is you're creating one of a kind art every single time you pull a print. <laughs> so that's the beauty of it. It is. And I love how, like you said, at the start, you might just be making really pretty backgrounds, but as you get the hang of it, you can be a little bit more deliberate. And then I'm just completely amazed at the people who actually will, um, you know, create that reference point and then use it to build up that, an image on that single page. Absolutely. And the image transfers that people are doing now and taking their little pieces and creating collage and just building up on that. Uh, we've got uh, Elizabeth St. Hilaire who does some beautiful uh, paintings that she does and with all the little pieces and she builds that up and creates these beautiful paintings with that. You've got people who make books out of them. You just, I mean, there's just so much that you can do with the gel prints after you've just played. Yeah. And that's the most important thing to do yeah. is don't get so wrapped up in the technicalities of it. Just have fun and play yeah. and mark off some time mm -hmm. and some space mm -hmm. because as you start playing, you're going to find that you're going to have papers everywhere and just play and have fun. Excellent. So what are you going to play with today, Cheryl? Well, I, I've got some paints out and I have a couple of different plates out as well. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that I'd kind of ask what, you know, if there, anybody had suggestions or mm -hmm. what kind of things our viewers were interested in seeing as mm -hmm. well, if we had any comments, okay. if you could tell me if we had yeah. any comments, what so they were looking for. So we've got a few for. questions now talking about different sizes, which is great. So Christy's asking, can you use the Dina Wakely gloss spray on the plate? Yes, yeah. you can. You can use that? Yes, Excellent. and I, I think we've had a couple of videos on our YouTube channel showing how to do that. There you go. Sounds like that's the answer to all the questions. <laughs> Excellent. Well, yes, let's, just go check them out. Just go check them out. Excellent. Well, we'll let you get ready and then we'll jump right into it. Okay. 
Excellent. So yes, please pop any comments or requests for Cheryl into the comments box. I can see Sarah, I can see Diana, I can see Wendy, I can see Elizabeth and Mel. Thank you all. And Mary and Joanne. Wow, so many, so many fantastic um, crafters in your own right. And I know a lot of you have had a play with the gel plate as well. So it really is a good opportunity. And for those that you remember, like we said, Cheryl was here two years ago. She came to the Sandown Show and then she came to teach in the Mixed Media Art Studios. And it is really lovely once you've had a play to get that, that level of expertise, someone that's done a lot of playing and being ready to go. So Cheryl, you just need to flip your camera over. We're still looking at the ceiling. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and it's also in portrait mode. So I might just need you to try, that's it, perfect. And then just pointing down to the bottom. There's always a challenge with technology. And for those of you who don't know, Cheryl's actually in Florida. So we are talking to the other side of the world this morning, but we've got a really good connection, sometimes much better than from point to point in Melbourne. So it is good to be able to use this technology as well. So we'll just give Cheryl another minute. So who else? We've got Dorothy, welcome. Rosalind, welcome. It's good to see so many of our regulars as well as some new people as well. Okay, it looks like Cheryl is nearly ready. That's looking good. Okay, and just, yep, just angle it down a little bit towards you and I think we'll be ready to go. Excellent. Okay, I think we're there. We're using our technology. Okay, Cheryl, I'll hand over to you. Take it away. All right, so you can see what I'm doing now? We can see what you're doing. Yep, we can see your huge gel plate plus the little <laughs> one you've got off to the side. Okay, great. So let's see if we can get a little bit more light here and uh, work with that as well without causing too much of a glare. So, so I have a 12 by 12 plate that is sitting on my plate right now, and I do have it on a glass mat just so that it's not sliding around anywhere. Um, and then I have a little one off to the side. I like to have a little plate off to the side so that I can use it as a, um, as a palette to load my brayer a lot of times. So you can use whatever size plate that you want to use to play with and you do not have to cover the whole plate so just because i have a 12 by 12 plate here doesn't mean that i have to cover the entire plate with paint and can you know consume all of that paint at the same time so you can use fluid paints you can use heavy body paints you can use a variety of different paints when you're playing on your gel plate so Let's start playing a little bit. I'm going to use some fluid paints today, just to kind of speed things along because they do dry pretty quick. So depending on where you're at, you do have to keep that in mind. So that's one thing I tell everybody when I'm teaching is always play with the mediums that you're going to use because everyone's going to play differently on their surfaces depending on what you're going to you know, where you're at, what your environment is, that type of thing. So it, how it plays here in Florida may be completely different than how it may play in Australia or how it may play in Arizona or something else like that. So always just have a little play and see what's going to happen. Now, I also have a little bit of paper off to the side that I'm just going to clean my brayer on as well. So I have that set up. Now, when you're working with your paints, take your brayer and you don't want to shove and push your paint all the way off to the edge. You just kind of want to add this little bouncy motion and brayer your paint out. So the first time, if this is your first time playing with it, you just want to give like these little bouncy motions. And you see that I'm just given a little light touch here and brayering these out. Now, if I pushed real hard, you'd get your little brayer lines and the brayer wouldn't roll. So that's why you just want to kind of give that little pouncy, little bouncy motion back and forth. I also don't want to rub and keep brayering because if I do, I'm just going to blend all my paints together and then I'm just going to get one color. If that's what you want, okay, that'll work. But we want to have a little bit of variation. 
so I'm going to clean off my brayer on my paper. Now with this, I could take any tools I wanted to create some designs. You could even use your fingers if you wanted to. You could finger paint here. I could take little things that you have around the house. So this is a little tape dispenser after I used some tape. So we could take that and create some little designs and just pull these off real quick. We could, this is another little uh, receipt holder. So this was a, a receipt from a little cash register and that will pull in some other little take off some plates. You could have little cardboard. So I'm, I'm on a circle theme here, obviously. So these are little cardboard from like aluminum foil or something that you can cut down, use those as well. Um, and then we have catalyst combs that you could come in and pull in some other little, little designs. And then you could take some paper. You can use copy paper. You can use cardstock. Let's see, here's some good copy paper. And we're gonna just lay this on. And I'm just gonna give that a little bit of a rub. And Cheryl, quite and often people that. will ask about the type of paper you use. Does, do you think it makes much difference to your prints? No, it, it depends on what look you're going to get out of it. If you're wanting to tear your paper, then I'd say use a thinner, a thinner copy paper. If you're wanting to use it for your card stock and do it as a background for a card, I would use a heavier paper. But when you're playing and you're just learning and starting out, just use just use copy paper. Use um, just whatever that you have. Use book paper. This is so much fun to do on book paper as well, like old books. Use your journal paper. The heavier paper that you use, if you use a heavier paper that has a weave to it, it's going to show and it's not going to go and it's not going to go down in those little weaves and stuff so that you won't get a smooth of a print. So that might be a little frustrating when you're really getting started. So the smoother the paper, the prettier the prints will be and the more satisfied you'll be, especially when you're starting off. Right. So, so that is one little smooth thing. Smooth is good. Yes, yes. So we've got a little bit left over. I could take a tag and we could pick some up. And this will start drying really quickly. See, it's already starting to dry because I've got my AC on because I'm in Florida and this is a fluid paint. But that's okay because I'm just going to leave this. If I wanted to clean this, there's a couple of different ways to clean your plate. You could wipe it with a baby wipe. You could just wipe it with some um, water. You could clean it with a hand sanitizer. I know that's in high demand right now, but you can <laughs> use a hand it is here too. You, Yes, you can use a hand sanitizer. Um, you can use baby oil. That'll clean it. But my favorite way to clean it is just put more paint on it and do another print. Uh -huh. So that's what we're going to do. Excellent. We're just going to add some more paint and see what happens Excellent. so okay now Chrissy yep. was just asking how do you know when you let the layer dry or when you don't when do you leave the paper on overnight or would you pull it off straight away I pull mine straight the only time that I would leave the paper on and leave it overnight is really as if is if you're trying to pick up a lot of layers of paint so in a, with an impressible, so these are our impressible. These are a couple of our impressibles. Then we'll load these up with paint sometimes and get a lot of paint on here. And then put paper on and leave them overnight because we really want all of the paint to, to dry into the paper. And I would leave that overnight, but just on a regular print, I really wouldn't leave that overnight too very often on on a flat plate. Right. Um, so it just depends on how many layers of paint that you have on your plate as to how long it's going to take to dry. Like I said, this is fluid paint, so it's 
drying really, really quick. You can see this is completely dry. Mm. So, I, you know, this is going to, I can put another layer of paint on here and go really quick. But if I use the heavy body paint, that would take longer to dry. So you might want to let that stay a little bit longer. Hope that helps answer that question a little mm -hmm. bit. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, if so, not, Christy can add, yeah, add a further question if she's got it. <laughs> yeah. And, and play with it. Because like I said, again, it's going to depend upon what type of paint you're using, what kind of environment, what type of, what time of the year it is. Mm -hmm. It's going to change yeah. quite often yeah. as well. And Cheryl, that's really been so, a theme for our videos over the last few months is get to know your supplies, understand what paint's see-through, what paint's opaque, how quick does it dry yes. in your conditions. Absolutely. So here we're just going to add a little bit more. And so this time you'll see that it's going to pick up some of these other colors underneath when I do this print too. So now I can come back in here. Now we have, if I can find them, so we have a couple of texture combs too. So our texture combs have little edges cut in the sides of them. And these are really great because see they're super soft. Really soft. I don't have to worry about them tearing into my plate or anything. So I love playing with these combs so we can create a nice little pattern and I can just wipe that off. Um, let's do a little bit more this way. Now I'm getting it on my hands. <laughs> it wouldn't be a proper gel press session if you didn't have it. I know, hands. right? <laughs> so put that there. I got that one all over my hands. I scooped a lot of paint on that plate. So, and now if I give a little rub. Now this paper is not as big as my 12-inch plate. So... If you have, when you're doing that and you have a piece of paper, so let's say you're working on a card base and your card is not as big as the plate that you're doing mm -hmm. and you don't want, and you've got more paint here, you can take another piece of paper and lay it over so that you're not getting paint everywhere. And that's going to help you so that you don't get paint all over your hands or all over the rest of your paper. And you can still get on the surface that you're doing. So this time I want to give a really good rub so that I get that paint that's underneath. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you really don't want to get paint on your hands, you're more than welcome to wear gloves as well. Yes, you can wear gloves. You can also use another brayer. So keep another brayer nearby that's clean and dry. And you can use that as well to brayer the back of your papers. And if you're not sure, you can do a little test and give a little peek to see if it's going to work. <laughs> and you see there -da, that it picked up all of the colors. So it picked up the colors that we did, but you see the old color, that orange, those vermilion colors that were on top too. So that's now sitting on the surface because that was the first layer that was on the gel plate. And then the other colors are underneath, but you've still got those shadows of those little circles that those little ghost prints that were underneath. So yeah. And like you, you said, you're sort of working backwards when you're stamping, you actually start with your forward image and work backwards, but on gel printing, you're really trying to put that first top layer down first. Correct. Correct. So there you go. So there's another print. Yeah. Now, Wendy's pointed um, out that when she gel plates, she gets it on her hands, face, clothes, hair, phone, and iPad as well. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I still, I, everybody laughs at me because I have paint on my steering wheel of my car. No way. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because I paint and then I go out, you know, go somewhere and sure enough, you know, there's, there's paint out there on my car. So is. Now, just before you start your next technique, um, someone, who have I lost the question? Someone, oh, Helen was just asking the setup. So if you just want to run through what you've got there again for those that have joined us late. Okay. I have a 12 by 12 plate. So I have a 12 by 12 plate here. I have a 6 by 6 on the side because I use this a lot of times to use as a palette, which I'm going to show you in a few minutes. So Actually, I thought I'd do that next. Up the small plate just to show people that haven't seen yep. it before. It's kind of, it's called a jello plate. Mine's dirty. It's like it's made yep. of, we'd call it jelly, you'd call it jello. So 
Yeah, it's kind of a um, it's a gel product, um, but it's not it's not like animal gelatin or anything else like that. Um, and it's got some mineral oils and things like that in it. But I'm saying like that too many too much tonight <laughs> but it's very flexible you can see you can really kind of work these you don't have to worry about messing these up too much they're they're very this is the thing i love about gel press they're very sturdy like i said you just don't take a blowtorch exacto knife or glitter to them so <laughs> so i keep that i usually keep one next to me as a uh, a palette plate. I have a brayer, so always keep brayers. I have a few of them. I like a, a four-inch brayer. I have a two-inch brayer that I always like to have nearby. Here's an, another one. We have some combs, some gel press texture combs. I have some paints, and then off to the side, I have just some paper that I'm just cleaning my brayer off and I will just use these to go into some art journals or some backgrounds, something else like that. Excellent. So. Now we had an earlier question about using alcohol inks. Yes, you can use alcohol inks. You can use alcohol inks on your plate and mix them with a little bit of alcohol. They're a whole lot of fun to play with. And we do have videos on our Gel Press YouTube channel, which talk about that as well. <laughs> okay. Because yeah, alcohol my go -to can answer. be a bit tricky, can't they? So. Well, they, you know, it's just like any other medium. So instead, when you're, when you're working them out, you just need a little bit of alcohol to kind of blend them and work them. But alcohol inks work great on here. Um, oil paints work on here. So you'll just, you'll need to clean them with oil, you know, with an oil instead of with cleaning them with acrylic mm. or instead of cleaning them with soap and water, you'd have to use, you know, some oil to clean them up um, and then clean a little bit with soap and water to clean up the oil residue. You can use watercolors on here. Just know that anytime that you use a watercolor or anytime that you use certain inks, those inks may bead up because this is a smooth surface. Mm. Some of the things may bead because they're water reactive. So just keep that in mind okay. when you're doing that. So just one more question before you jump into your next technique. So Maureen yep. was asking when the paper rolls up, when you pull the print, how do you straighten it again? Uh, so when it curls up like this? Yeah. Just kind of flip it the other way and let it dry on the other, you know, let it, let it dry. Mm -hmm. And then once it's completely dry, you can flip it over sometimes the other way, put a book on it. Most of the time though, it just needs to completely dry is what, when it curls, the moisture in it is bending your paper. Um, a lot of times just the simple act of drying will flatten it out a lot of times if it doesn't then once it's completely dry you could even iron it <laughs> you could put it under a book but don't do that until it's dry make sure that your paint is completely you can even take a heat gun to it real quick um and let give it give it a little bit of heat and that will dry that will smooth it back out some oh, excellent thank so, you Cheryl. okay i'll hold yep. all the questions now you can you can do some more playing okay all right, so one of the tools that we have too is our impressibles. And these are uh, these are like giant polymer stamps on steroids <laughs> is the kind of what we like to call them. They are embossed or debossed with different shapes on them. So mine are dirty. Mine have paint on them already. I don't clean my stuff half the time. Uh, those of you who've followed me know that. <laughs> so... Um, I like to just work with dirty because I like to see what's going to happen when I pull those little dirty prints and, and all these little colors pop up. So this is one that has circles in it. This one is the mandala. So these are just a couple, but we have a variety of different size. These are seven by seven squares. And then we have a couple that are 12 by 12. And these can be so much fun to play with. So we're on a circle theme tonight. I'll stick with the circle theme tonight. So here's some ways that we can use this plate in conjunction. So we'll start off with just using just this plate, let you, let you see this. So the impressibles 
you can work directly on your plate. Um, we, so we can put some paint directly on my impressible. Now, normally I would not, I have this one is sitting on an acrylic block right now. So I do have a giant block that I put mine on so that I can use it like a big stamping mm -hmm. pad sometimes. And I don't normally recommend that you put it on top of another plate because you oh, don't want okay. these sharp corners to yeah. stab yours, but I'm being very careful. Mm -hmm. So, um, do, don't do as I do or just be very <laughs> careful. I'm trying to stay contained yep, with No, you're doing very well. Spice. It is a bit hard when it comes to gel printing to stay contained. Yes, 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 yes. So we're going to add a little bit of paint here. And so this time I'm using a little bit more of a heavy body paint because I want this to dry a little bit slower and I want it to be a little bit thicker. And I'm going to use a smaller brayer. And this time I'm just going to push this paint into these little grooves. And I want this to go all the way down into the little circles all the way around and work this. Now with, because I am working this paint, I will get more of a blend than I normally do because we are brayering back and forth, back and forth. So don't try to get too fancy with your colors because you are going to be blending. Makes that little smushy noise. Yeah, that's a really good and point. And you're going to find... Think, yeah, when you're starting out, you do want to be a little bit conservative in your colours, stick to the warms or the cools until you get the hang of it. Yes, and and a little paint goes a long way. And you're going to find that some people are very light-handed with their colour, with their paint. And some people are very heavy-handed with your paint. So you you may find that... If you're always getting paint that's coming off the edges, you're using way too much paint. If you're not getting a lot of paint on your prints, you may be very light-handed, so maybe you need to add a little bit more. But that may just be the way that you that may just be the way that you work, you know? So so I've got all that paint in here. So now if I take a print, so I'm just going to use the We'll just use this one here, the back of this one. And if I put this paper real light and just give a light little touch, so I'm not pressing very hard at all, all I'm going to get are the rings that were debossed or embossed, and I'm just going to get the tops of them. So it's going to look like a stamped image, just like that. Yep. But... If I, I have enough paint on this brayer, that's why I left it upside down, put it back just to show you the difference. If I come back in and now I press really hard and get all the way down in there, then I'm going to get like this little shadowed look. So now we're going to get two kind of looks that we're going to pick up Ooh. so it gives you this little shadowed look that you're gonna see and you see the difference it's amazing how you can get two such different looks from you know not much difference in a from process. one thing yeah. right now the really cool thing is there's still some paint i'm gonna go ahead and just load this back up again because i've still got that's why i wanted to use a heavy body paint and i loaded it up so I could do this kind of quickly. And well, I am going to take one of these. And I'm just going to take the paint again, what I did the first time, real lightly off of the top. So you think I'm just doing the same thing I've already done, but I'm not. <laughs> Bear with me here. So now we're layering. Look at that. Oh. Layers, layers. But so when I have a palette here next to me, I can now come in and find a contrasting color. And I can use this palette that I have next to me 
and take a bright contrast color and just skim across the top where I lifted that color off a minute ago and very lightly. So I've just loaded my brayer with that really hot fuchsia pink. What is that called? Uh, magenta. <laughs> and I'm just real lightly coming back across and popping it on top of these rings. So I'm not pressing down real hard. And because I'm on camera, I'm using a big, <laughs> I'm getting it in a few places, but I'm not going to sweat that. Now, when I pull my print, I'm going to give a good, good smush, give a little press, give a little rub, <laughs> give it some love. I think give that's the nice best part, massage. just giving it a nice massage, especially at the moment when we're so disconnected. I think it's important to have that tactile aspect. Yes. And there is something just totally therapeutic about playing with the gel press plates and this is why I love the impressibles I really do they can be so much fun to play with so give that a nice little massage get down in those little grooves and now when I peel this back now see you get this tone on tone look so if I had even more paint down in there it would have even been juicier so you get that nice little look that you've got. So now to do a pickup print, because there's still paint on here, mm -hmm. I can take some of some white paint. And so you said pickup print. I don't think you've mentioned that before. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Yes. So this is what everybody loves to do, a pickup print. So when I was talking earlier about one of the ways to clean your plate is just to add more paint. So a lot of times at the end of my session, okay, not really a lot of times, sometimes, because you guys have seen my plates are usually really dirty, and I'll just put them back in their clamshell just like this, and that's the way they go. But when I do want to do a pickup print or clean my plates, and especially if I'm going to do it like right before a project, a pickup print is a way to clean the dried paint off. So some of this is still a little bit wet in there, but most of it is dry mm -hmm. so we're gonna add some white paint this works better if you use a medium or heavy body paint and it doesn't take much I probably added just a little too much right there actually but that's okay we'll just brayer some off yep I'm just gonna brayer some off over here and that's a big there bottle of white paint. You must use a lot of white paint, Cheryl. I do. <laughs> there's, there's always a reason to use white. So, and it's mixing because I had a little bit of that magenta still on my brayer. So I'm going to get like a light, light magenta. But I'm really going to work that in. So this might help answer a little bit of that question that we had a minute ago, too, about how long to let it sit to, to dry. So we might actually sit this one off to the side and let it dry. You don't have to let it dry for that long, but it depends on how long and how thick your paint is. I could take some off. Oh, you can also... You, when you're brayering on these, you see how I get this nice little imprint on my... Oh, yeah. So you could take this and actually run it on a piece of paper and get another imprint if you had color. So that would be another fun way to get some little looks, too. All right. So now... Now, if I had, if I really wanted to get this and get all of that, if I had a lot of layers on there, this is where we would let this sit and let it sit for a couple hours until it's completely dry right. or let it sit overnight. Um, 
another thing you can do is uh, use them. You can even use them as a mold. I've seen this one used and take a light texture paste and put oh. a texture paste in there and let it dry overnight for many, many hours mm. and then peel the texture paste out and you'll get that texture that you can then use that and collage that into a mixed media piece. Oh, so amazing. you could use it kind of like a mold. Mm -hmm. So you could test it to see it's working, <laughs> how well it's picking up. Okay, well, perhaps while you're rubbing those, I've got another couple of questions. Georgia was asking yep. about storing your gel plates. Hey, Georgia. There are a few different ways that you can store your plates. So while that's sitting, I will tell you about storing your plates. So I have a couple here just to kind of give you an idea. So when you're storing your plates, most of the time we recommend that you store them on their sides like a book. So on a bookshelf, if you can store them on it, on their sides, in their clamshells, on a bookshelf, like a book. But only if you can store them upright so that things are next to them and going to keep them upright so they're not going to be slouching and falling over. If you don't have the space to do that, then you can, then you can put them on a flat surface. But you cannot be stacking things on top of them oh, no, that's because bad. these are, so, yes, <laughs> because our plates are so sensitive, which is a good thing because that's what gives you those great little impressions when you're doing your prints and you're getting those little leaves and those little things. So if you put something on top of them, then that's going to give an impression and you're going to, and, and it'll, it'll show up. So now, the really big plates, you, you may not want to store them upright because they could slouch over time. So you might want to put them kind of flat down. But if you can keep them straight up and something to keep them straight up and down and keep them from falling over, that's the best way to store them. But keep them in their clamshells so that they don't get dirty. But when you get them, take their little mylar off. So... I just got some new ones. So here are some of our petites. Ooh. Yes. And these come in little shapes. And these are a lot of fun because these can be put on a block, just a, a stamping block. Well, it's a giant stamping block. So, but you, if you have a little stamping block, you could take these and put them on a stamping block and then use them as a stamp, load them up. But when you get them, they're going to come with the Mylar. Take the Mylar and either recycle it or use it for a paint palette or a window in your card, a shaker, or throw them away, but do not stick them back on your plate because it will trap air in your plate and then you'll get a bubble. So don't put them back on your plate. Now. Some people, though, I will say, some people like to take just one side off and then they keep mylar on the other so that it stays a little bit flatter and it helps give them something to hold on to. So, but if you ever take it off, well, then don't ever put it back on. So now I can't put mylar back on those two because uh, it just never goes back on smooth. And are they new shapes? We don't have those ones. You don't have these ones? Not yet. Um, these have been around for a little bit. Oh. These are some by Richard Garay. These are, um, what is the name of these? Uh, I think these, are, these aren't shout outs. These are, I'm looking for the name of them, but this is a light bulb yep. and an arrow and a house. Oh, excellent. So, yeah, we have a couple different um yeah, this is one that has hexagon yep. and the rectangle and the oval. Yep. We have yeah. some that have circles and lips and mustaches. Yeah. So this one is 
good enough that it's getting most of it. But Actually, if I you, left it here longer. Yeah, why you sorry? put that circle plate there? We've just had two questions. What size is that? And if you can get circles. <laughs> yes. So we have a couple different sizes. So this one is a six inch circle. Mm -hmm. And we also have an eight inch circle and a four inch circle. <laughs> and one set of our petites has a little like three inch circle in it. The set A which is in one of my little cabinets here has a little three inch circle in it, but this one is a six inch circle. Uh -huh. And the fun thing about the six inch circle, I think when I was there, we played with them. I'm reaching over here to my right is that these we have co-branded and partnered with Carabelle. Uh -huh. And so Carabelle stamps has these texture plates so you know you were talking when you stamp on a plate it stamps in reverse mm -hmm. because you're doing a print well these the stamps themselves are in reverse right. so when you stamp on the plate they come out the right way so see the number I don't know because we're filming so it may look like it's the right way for you but these are actually stamped in reverse mm -hmm. so that when you print with them they come out the right way so these actually fit the six inch plates oh. and we have some that fit the six inch. We have some that fit the six inch as well, the six inch square. So we have some that fit the six inch square and the three by five. Right. And so these all work together and these are by Carabelle studio. Mm -hmm. So these are texture plates, texture printing stamps, and they are so much fun to play with as well. So Excellent. hopefully that. Yep. All right. So there you go. So that took up a lot of the paint. Not all of it. If I had let this sit longer, like the question that we had a minute ago, that would have even cleaned up more of the paint. But you can see I got a lot of it up. And let's see if you can see this. I'm trying to get this at the right angle. Um, it, as it dries, it'll actually pick up some of the texture from inside the rings too because I use that heavy body paint so yeah, we can I can't sort of tell if you can see that just make that out yeah yeah it's kind of hard to see so um so that's one of the things that you can do with the texture plates too and then this is why I don't recommend you stick it to the plate <laughs> so so we have our plate here so uh, you can use it like I said as a stamp as well so if I have the big plate and we let's load up some paint here, do this again, put some paint and play with play with colors when you're if you're not sure, like what kind of color should I use? I'm not comfortable mixing colors. Like Michelle said a minute ago, stick with warms to begin with. Stick with cools, you know, at first until you're comfortable. Only start with two colors. When you're comfortable mixing two colors, then add a third. When you're comfortable working with warms, then throw in a different color until you're comfortable with what's going to happen. Once you're comfortable with how those colors are going to mix, then you can start mixing in an opposite color. But if you just start mixing all kinds of colors on your plate, that's when you're going to get mud. And that's when you're going to get frustrated because it's not going to make you happy if, unless you want to make mud. Yeah, I so. think the two things that are the most frustrating for beginners is yeah, too much paint and yes. mixing too many colors. So now, because this is on a block, I can use it, like I said, as a stamp. So now I can use this to do some subtractive, so taking paint away from my plate. So I can come in here and remove, so I can take some and lift some color up. And clean off my plate over here. So now I've used it as a stamp, uh -huh. which is kind of like the first pool that I did. Yeah. But now I can, but now I can see where I'm going and lift and lift some paint. 
clean this up a little bit more. Yeah, it's good to remember we're always working on a few different ones. We've got where we put our brayer paint, where we put our stamped off paint mm. and the impressions as yep. well. Yep. Now remember when you're lifting, because I'm lifting paint up, if you just if you just picked it up and moved it over, you're just moving paint over, which is fine if you're moving it to a clear spot. But if you just picked it up here and picked it up there, you're just moving it from one point to the next instead of lifting. So now I can let this dry for a few minutes, and then if I put paint over it, it would fill in the in the in the little places so i'm gonna let this we're gonna play like tv here <laughs> thankfully or i've got some questions that you can answer while that's drying okay go ahead okay so um lisa said that she hasn't stored her 12 inch by 12 inch plate correctly and it's got a divot in it is there any way to take that bump out of it I would do do you I would first ask if you have the mylar on take the mylar off. Mm -hmm. The second thing that I would tell you to do is to take it out and lay it somewhere totally flat. Take it out of the clamshell, put it on a flat surface. So if you have a, a glass mat or some place that you could put it that's flat. So the reason why I put mine on a glass mat, I will lift up my glass mat is because I do have a I have a little paper towel that I did put underneath mine so it doesn't slide. And I dampen this just a tiny bit so it doesn't slide all over the place when I'm working. But my surface is, I actually put flooring on my desk <laughs> because this is a plywood desktop. Yeah. So I put flooring on mine. So it has like grooves in it. I don't want to put my gel plate on that because it would put those little grooves on my on my gel plate so that's why i put mine on this really smooth glass mat if your glass mat has those grooves in it mm -hmm. that tell you where the lines are don't use that yeah. use something totally smooth mm -hmm. um, a lot of times you can go to a hardware store big box store something like that and even ask them to cut a piece of acrylic for you if you need it if you have like a big one and get a piece that's big enough if you don't have a glass mat that's really smooth and straight and, what and about, lay it flat for a while and what about putting it on a craft mat you can put it on a craft, a non-stick craft mat, but do not put it on a silicone craft mat. Right. Gel plates do not play well with silicone craft mats. They have a reaction with each other. So they will absorb chemicals from each other and they will warp. So do not put it on a silicone craft mat. So double check. Some of your craft mats are silicone. Do not put your plate on a silicone craft mat. It will actually warp it. So don't do that. Um, but some of your non-stick craft mats you can use. Um, just be careful. Yeah. Okay. That's good to know. Um, if, if leaving it out flat doesn't work, you can put a piece of paper on top of it. So if it's a big one, try to find just a, a big piece of smooth cardstock, put it on both sides, lay it out really flat. And then you may want to put like a, a couple big books or something on top of it and leave it that way. But most of the time that will take it out. Um, if not, shoot me an email. You can email me at Cheryl at gelpress.com and let me know and we'll, we'll work through something else. Um, but most of the time that will work. Excellent. Yep. Okay. And then one more question. So uh, yep. Elizabeth's asking about printing directly into a journal. Oh, absolutely. You can do that. Um, and the easiest way to do that is either pick up your journal and pick up your journal and press it onto your plate. So if this was my journal, you could press that into your plate. Now know that if you have uh, uh, your where your spine is, you know, you're going to, it's not going to fit really smooth. So you might want to work on the edge or something of that nature. So the smaller plates will work a little bit better in your art journals. But the other thing that you can do is if you're working with a smaller 
plate. So if depending on the size of your journal, you can work with the three by fives. We have a five by seven. We have the, the petites. We have a variety of different sizes available to play with. That's what makes them so much fun is that by putting them on a stamp block. So the three by five here really fits nicely on a stamping block. My stamping blocks are a hot mess, but you get the idea. So see, it fits really great on a stamping block. And then I could press it directly into my art journal. Mm. Or if you're not worried about that, you can just take it and press it into your art journal. But then if it's covered in paint, you'll get it on your hands and yeah. stuff. So it depends on how messy you want to be, mm -hmm. but they cling really well. And here's my, well, my phone's up there. So my tip though, for the day, if you're traveling and I have been known to do this because you guys know I travel quite a bit. If this was my phone, these little ones stick really great to a phone to too. A phone. And you can use the back of your phone as a stamp pad. So, that That's sounds my like a travel tip good way day. to get paint on your phone, most definitely. It'll wipe off. It'll wipe off. That's okay. All right. So I think this is dry enough that we can make this okay. work. So we have some paint. So again, this is why I love having a plate next to me to use as a palette. So I can load my brayer and I'm just going to <laughs> kind of dry it up a little bit though the paint here did so we're gonna load that back up because yeah you're having some hot weather in florida at the moment a bit of a late summer oh no florida stays hot <laughs> florida stays hot until mm, december right <laughs> yeah well spring has just started to spring in melbourne so we're all excited that it's starting to get a bit warmer again oh uh. I wish that it would start cooling off. I keep looking. We're still, it's still been really hot here. We've still been in the 90s and still even getting, um, our, our feel like temps have been in the hundreds. It's been awful and very humid. So I'm, I just put this piece of paper to get that little top edge there. So. I'm giving it a really good rub because I want to pick up the paint that's underneath. And now I'm getting all of those colors that we had. Oh, wow. So you can see. Yeah. So you can see that the pink went down into those grooves that I lifted up. And then I had all of those other colors that were underneath. So all there's... There's even one of those little colors. There's still some of that vermilion from the very first pool. That is sticking around, so this isn't is it? Another. Yeah. So you can see we've still got some of that as well. Um, so there you go. Those are a lot of fun. Oh, How much time do we have? Can I still keep playing? Yeah, you've probably another five minutes or so. Oh, okay. All right. So stencils. I cannot go without telling you a little bit about stencils. So there's, there's so much you can do with stencils too. So uh, stencils, stencils, stencils. Um, you can play by putting paint down. Five minutes. Good grief. I needed like a little clock in the background. Yeah, going, no, ding, you're ding, fine. Ding, you're ding, fine. Ding. <laughs> And Joanne was asking what time is it there? So what we're approaching eight o'clock on Friday evening. Yep. Eight o'clock. Yeah. Yep. That's about what time it is we're here. We're approaching 10 o'clock Saturday morning. Saturday morning. Okay. So I've got a little bit of color here. Mm -hmm. And you've gone with and your I'm gonna flow use... acrylics again. Yep, I've gone with the flow acrylics just so it'll dry a little bit quicker again, um, just because the time constraints. Uh, and I know that this will work really well. And again, notice that I'm just kind of, I have a little little paint booger is what I call them. Sorry. That's just kind of got, got in there. 
But notice the technique that I'm using. So I'm not I'm not going eh, er, yeah. eh, er, with my brayer. See, when I do, I get the little brayer marks. Yeah. So just kind of doing this little bouncy motion. And that way you don't get the edges of the brayers. And you can get a nice little smooth line. So with the stencils... There's so much. I can show you so many different ways to use stencils. That's a fantastic now, this stencil. One, Who's that one by? This one's by the Crafters oh, Workshop. The crafters of course. Workshop. <laughs> yes. So this one I think is um oh I think this one's Bubble Rebound or I think that's the name of it. I'm sorry I can't remember the name of this one right now, but um I think that's the name of it. And so I've laid a stencil down. I could lift this off and do a print, but I could. Um, I think I have some big paper here. Now, if I use a craft paper. Ooh. Ooh. Come on, internet. Ooh. Oops. It looks like we've lost Cheryl, so just hold on a moment. We will do our best to get her back, and we will be right back. Okay, we've got Cheryl I back. Don't know. We're I good. Could... Maybe it's this end. I don't know. I could hear you the entire time, what? so I have no oh, idea. So maybe it was at this end. You do know that Australia's got worse internet than like Kazakhstan, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey. well, I'm back. So hi. So we we All must right. have so hit this the time I'm using craft. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the colors will be a little bit more muted, mm -hmm. but it'll still be a fun little look. Oh, that is so, so this pretty. I've, isn't that pretty? Now, if I lift the stencil, now I still have all those colors underneath, and I could take the stencil. I could take the stencil, and I could put this in my art journal, or I could put it on a piece of paper, or I could put it somewhere else. So, I'm going to take some a different piece of paper. And I can get two different looks with this stencil. Yeah, and what a great use of all that 12 inch by 12 inch paper we have. Yes, because you could definitely do this with some of that paper that you don't like. And now I have paper that's what a great background this would be for a layout now. So yeah. imagine now I take I take my photos and I you know take a little tag and I take um, I don't have anything square here right now, but let's just imagine that I have a photo and I put a photo in here. Ta da! And I put my photo and I add some more embellishments and I put a title and I have a scrapbook page ready to go yeah. just by doing that little bit right there. Yep. And you could ink around the edges. Exactly. And completely unique. No one's going to look at that and go, oh, I see you've used so-and-so papers. It's completely no. Yours. And the fun thing about it too, especially with the 12 by 12, is you know that old scrapbook paper that you have that's kind of gone – out of style or it's really thin and you oh. don't want to use it anymore oh no sure um, i wouldn't have any of that anywhere she says tongue in cheek. <laughs> <laughs> well you could find some and then um give it new life because if you added paint to it that's going to bulk it up a little bit so you could give it new life and just totally create your own new pattern paper and that's the perfect thing that I love about having the 12 by 12 is that you could do it that way. So how much do we have time to do a, one more stencil oh, yeah. technique? yeah, let's do one more. Okay. Let's right. just so, hope the internet um, gods stick with us, but I think we're doing okay. All right. Good, good, good. So we're going to add some more color here. Now we just had one and, more storage uh, question too by Kerry. Kerry yep. said, so if she keeps her store on the glass mat – with the half clamshell on top with space and nothing else. Do you think that's a safe way? Yeah, as long, you know, the clamshell is mostly just to keep it protected from dust 
Um, if you have critters to keep it from, you know, dog hair, your <laughs> hair, dust, that kind of thing. That's oh, the purpose wasn't quite of the clam sure show. Which critters you were going to talk about then? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have two dogs. <laughs> So, you know, I know that many people have cats and cats love to play on the desk. So, you know, you want to kind of keep keep all the little hairs because those little hairs will definitely put a texture into your plate, which could be fun in their own, you know, in their own little right. You could have this great little texture in your designs, but may not be what you want. <laughs> all right. So we take our stencil and... We can lay our stencil down, and then I could take a. Uh, we're just, I'm going to repurpose paper here, and I'm going to pull a print again, just like I did a minute ago. And this is kind of what you know I did a second with the impressible in some ways. But see, this is why I like the fluid. This paint's already dry. Yeah. Um, oh, I just so love I'm gonna that lift on the, the craft paint. paper. That's just great. I'm going to have to go drag Isn't it Isn't that great? <laughs> yep. You just have to play with it because sometimes mm. it's beautiful and sometimes the craft paper can mute your color. So it depends on what colors you're playing with. Mm. So I've taken color away from inside. So this technique works great with stencils that have open patterns in them. So I've taken the paint out of where the stencil out of the holes of the stencils so now i want to add some color back inside this time i want to use something a little bit contrasty different color so i'm just going to paint this right over the stencil mm -hmm. and the secret here is you have to remember before you do your print to remove your stencil after this part here. Yeah, this is a tricky not, one. You can either take the stencil off too early one. or not take it off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, people will watch this one and then they'll put their paper on right now. And if you put your paper on on top of the stencil, uh, sometimes, especially with paint that dries real very fast, your paper will stick to the stencil and then you're mad and then you're cussing me and then I'm sorry. <laughs> so, all right. So if we just take and lift very carefully the stencil Ooh. and we're just going to put this somewhere, somewhere off to the side and I'm going to grab another piece of paper here. And I'm going to lay this on top. I didn't quite get it centered, but that's because I'm not standing. <laughs> yeah. I usually stand, but today I'm like, oh, I don't know how long we're going to be here. So. Yeah. And so Debbie was asking what brand of the fluid paint are you using? This is Deco Art Media. Uh -huh. Deco. I like Deco Art. Deco Art's a good one. Golden Art, uh, Golden Fluid mm -hmm. is a good one. Uh, it just depends upon, you know, what you want to do. I've used Paper Artsy. They're, they're more of a chalk paint, mm. so they dry really quick. You just have to be, you know, ready to, ready to move with those. But they're a lot of fun the, to use in your journal because you can write over those. Yeah. So I love to use those. That's good. You just have to be quicker. Yeah, all right. Fiona wants to know if we can play with you all day. She thinks you're awesome. Please. <laughs> I love, this is my favorite part. Okay. So here's the magic. Like we need a drum roll sound effect. <gasps> and that's why we do it. Look at that. That's just gorgeous. Yep. Yes. Oh, we've got hearts floating all over the screen. Lovely. Yeah, that is that's my that's one of my favorite things to do. That can be so much fun. And you can just keep playing with that. And again, now you have a background ready to go. So imagine if you had this, this would be perfect for a, a beach or, you know, swimming pool or a yeah. birthday party where you had bubbles going or something and make a little scrapbook page out of this as well. So there you go. Excellent. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah.
Excellent. So well, now we... all these pages, mm-hmm. I can take these and I can or I can collage with these. I can make an art journal page out of them. I could cut this up. So I could cut these and make this into a card background. I can make a canvas out of them. So when we were there in, when I was there in your studio, we made some mixed media canvases. We made some yes. cards. Mm-hmm. We made a journal. We did all kinds of stuff. I know. And I still, you've introduced you to my absolute biggest love in mixed media, which is the Crafters Workshop Matte Medium. Uh, yes. <laughs> I love that much. I I've actually it. finished a jar. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Good. Excellent. Good. I'll give you a minute to switch your camera around and then we'll see if we've got okay. any more questions. Excellent. So I hope you have enjoyed that as much as I have. And as Cheryl said, the real challenge if you're just getting starting out is to have a play, get to know what your paints will do, get to know your brayers and then just really have fun and just play. And sometimes that can be the challenge is just to let us go. But I think it really does um make us you know really encourage us to do that as well so that is fantastic that's a great thing to do okay so Cheryl we have had so much fun with you today thank you I had fun too so sometimes it gets you know you don't get to play that often so it was fun to play as well yeah definitely now if people want to find out more about gel press where's the best place for them to go the Gel Press YouTube channel is mm-hmm. probably the number one place to find inspiration, techniques, and tools. Definitely check us out, uh, Gel Press, on Instagram. You can find us, Gel Press Printmakers, on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And then if you want to see all the different size plates that we have, you can find us at gelpress.com. Mm-hmm. Excellent. And there's also a Facebook group where you can share your own work. Oh. Yes, yes. Please, please look for us, Gel Press Printmakers. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have a Gel Press Printmakers group that we have um, as a Facebook group, and we have people that are putting stuff in there, sharing inspiration, asking all those questions that you asked. That's the perfect place to ask them, Mm -hmm. because not only is the creative team in there to answer the questions, but peers just like you who are using them every single day are in there to answer the questions and share what they're making. We had somebody today who was sharing using that little three by five and they were creating earrings oh. and, and printing on little wood blanks earrings. So definitely oh. and little buttons and little cards. So definitely check it out exactly so and yeah we don't need to learn by ourselves we can reach out to people who have done it before and it really does shortcut your learning yeah yes definitely and it's it's always it's always so much more fun to play with each other right i mean who we can just get inspiration from one another and i wish that i could see all of you guys also i mean i can't wait to go back i will We'll go back and read all the comments and try to answer some questions. But I wish that I could be seeing all your little faces and giving you hugs and stuff too. Yeah. So, Well, hopefully we can have you back here soon enough. We will. As soon as all this crap is over. <laughs> yeah, we will have you here. Excellent. Well, Cheryl, thank you so much. And, of course, a huge thank you for Gel Press for helping you bring with, come with us today. Well, thank you for inviting me. Okay, I had we'll a great see you again planned. soon. Thanks, Cheryl. All right. <laughs> Bye-bye. Fantastic. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Now, if you do have any questions, like we say, I see some of the questions that we did actually answer earlier in the video. So go back and watch the replay. And if we still didn't answer your questions, pop them in the comments again, and we will make sure we get to them. So of course, this with all the links will be over on our website from picture to page and beyond.com.au. And we can link to the gel press site, link to Cheryl's um, socials and of course that gel press Facebook group as well where you really can um, play share and then take your learning to that next level as well so please while you're here help us out by making sure you give us a like sharing us with your crafty friends tell everyone that P2P craft presents will continue to bring you interviews with our talented retailers and our fantastic guest artists regardless of if we're in lockdown or not we will be here to share the crafting inspiration so this is Michelle signing off we hope you have a crafty day